One thing I really noticed about talking to landowners is sometimes they're just not aware of the options that are available, either through civil culture practices or um, accessing forest professionals to help them manage their land. I agree. I, I think that the other thing is, is that making them aware that we actually care what their values are and we're actually committed to trying helping them achieve their values and goals. And actually start there. Absolutely, and not ignore them. And spend yeah. as much time talking to landowners about their values and goals as we do measuring things. Now we find ourselves in a balsam fir dominated forest. Not only is the canopy dominated by balsam fir here, but the regeneration layer that's developing in this young stand is dominated by balsam fir as well. This is one of the most common situations that landowners are in right now, mm -hmm. this stand type. This is very common. Yeah. You, see, you see this a lot, which is, as somebody who practices in the province, not making me feel so well about the future. Well, what should we get started with? Well, I think uh, we should do uh, get a soil type and a veg type on this. Okay. Might as well start there, John. If we were to do nothing in this stand, that balsam fir regeneration layer will build up. I would think, especially in the microclimate of this more humid understory, with the shade, the balsam fir will likely outcompete red maple in the shade here over the next 50 years. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you're going to get some sort of major event that's going to take down the canopy and you're going to end up with another balsam fir dominated stand and a climate that's even less favorable to balsam fir. So the classic clear-cut plant softwood won't actually get us out of that cycle. Like we... Well, that's the interesting thing, right? So one trajectory to continue on that pathway would be to commercially thin this, right? which would cost a pile of money. So let's just, let's just think about how much cost is involved that, with that. $730 a hectare for your PCT. That's right. So that's, we, we clear-cut this, uh, we come back in and pre-commercially thin it, $730 plus a landowner contribution. Yeah, so it's over 800 bucks. And if you look at the government um, supervision and audit management layer on top of that, we're pushing, the, I'm sure we're pushing the $900 mark. I, I would think at least. Yeah. Um, so we, we do that and then we're still back in the same spot. Maybe you commercially thin it with more uh, taxpayer subsidy. Like we're basically back here. Yeah, we are back here. So why don't we do a, a point sample and get uh, canopy composition next when you go. Yeah, good call. So by the time we PCT it, we're into 2050. We're looking at probably a degree, at least a degree increase in, in temperature. So in that intervention, there would be essentially no very little revenue to the landowner. There wouldn't be, it wouldn't encourage the regeneration of more climate change adapted species. It wouldn't change the age structure of the stand. So now we're managing even age balsam fir in the year 2050. Right. Right. So, like, I know people always put that it's off, but like kind of what better time than now to make that investment to start Absolutely. bringing some diversity and, and adapted species into the stand. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> so should we try and get an age on it? Yeah. And if we look at it in the reverse of cost, I mean, obviously the oak seedlings are going to cost money. I mean, the other option, which I'm doing on my, my wood lot and I'm pushing landowners to do is acorns. Right. Like acorns are cheap and they're free. You can like just... walking around here, tossing acorns is really cheap. <clears throat> Carrying around a stick and driving them into the ground. Yeah. Is even more effective. Like I would be blanketing this stand with acorns. Once you make that investment to plant it here and establish it, uh, that that's a fantastic investment because it's going to re replenish itself. Like once the seed stores is back on the land base and you maintain that, it's going to be a lot more attractive to yep. buy uh, a land that's climate change resilient um, rather than one that's has is full of maladapted species that sure. are either dying or dead or or growing so slowly that they're not really sequestering much carbon. Yeah, well, I think you'd come up with a. <clears throat> to me, if we we're going to do in a regular system here, you want to start regenerating the stand as soon as possible, especially due to the risk right. associated with both the species inherently and the climate change forecasts. Um, you would want to plan a schedule for the gradual, gradual removal, as gradual as possible, removal right. of that overstory, so that <clears throat> one, you the carbon that we have stored here would be stored for as long a period of time as possible, and two, 
um, you would end up with a more irregular, more multi-age stand as an outcome, which could eventually in the next cycle head towards more truly uneven age silviculture and more perpetual carbon storage. Um, getting back to your point about cost, if you timed it right, your only real initial straight cash outlay would be that initial planting because by the time you came in for a second planting, you could use the harvest revenue, the, the release of the, the harvest revenue from the release of those seedlings yeah. to help pay for the cost of the next planting. Right. So if, if, if a landowner wanted to, if, if a landowner saw value in managing um, for climate change and, and other values other than in that cycle of softwood production, um, like two things need to happen. They need to first realize, well, what is their values? Is it producing low grade softwood? And, and if, if that's not, then what is it? Is it uh, managing for recreation? Is it managing for wildlife? Is it, is it um, distributed revenue for generations in the future? Is it carbon sequestration? They need to commit to those values. I think oftentimes with, with private landowners, we neglect to understand, well, what is, what is the reason why you own that land? And the other thing I think that people need to recognize too, I think we all would like to think that, you know, if left to its own devices, that this, that, you know, forest would, would return to some sort of idealized mixed species, multi-aged, sort of perfect virgin climax forest. But the reality is, is that sometimes, success, sometimes successional pathways change and they end up in a successional pathway loop. And the reality is, is whether there was red spruce here before or white pine here before, this is in a balsam fir successional loop there. Right. So without breaking it or without the climate changing to the point where fir can no longer compete here, right. we're stuck in that loop. Right. So if, if that loop is, if that outcome is undesirable, then we need to manipulate the stand towards some other trajectory, some other pattern.